Yeah, Coach, what uh, uh, issues will y'all face going against a veteran quarterback like uh, Andy Dalton? If they stay with him? You said issues? Yes. What yeah. Oh, yeah. No, I mean, Andy Dalton obviously was a high draft pick for a reason. Uh, he's a talented player, can make all the throws, has seen it all. I mean, I think he's been in the league since the whatever 2011, 2010, something, something like that. And so when you're dealing with a vet quarterback like that, I mean, he's, he's seen front structures, he's seen coverage contours, um, he, he's, he's seen a lot. And so uh, we're dealing with a, a, a talented guy back there. And so we have to make sure that we're changing things up, make the picture uh, muddy for him. Uh, make sure our, our pass rush uh, heats up and uh, play sticky coverage. Uh, the running backs, uh, Hubbard and Sanders, how they're trying to utilize those two. Yeah, two talented players. You know, first I'll start with Hubbard, uh, a downhill runner, uh, can make guys miss. You know, that's usually a uh, you know a big trait for for a really talented running back is a is a running back that can make somebody miss, and, and Hubbard can definitely do that. But then he can also get his pads down and, and, and bully over. Uh, and then Sanders, a little more quick, uh, quick excuse me, uh, fleet, fleet of foot. And so it's really a dynamic duo of two backs. And they'll put them on the field at the same time, and, and they'll also sub, you know, and they'll be in there uh, uh, individually. And so two, two really good backs that we have to deal with. And the uh, receiver, Deontay, I guess he's leading them in numbers, and the rookie looks like he's back at practice. Uh, what are they uh, doing outside? I know the line has uh, got a couple injuries in there. Yeah, no, Deont Deontay, I mean, a talented player. You know, obviously made a ton of plays up in Pittsburgh. And, uh, you know, now he's down here in Carolina. And uh, they're giving him a lot of opportunities to, to catch the football. And he's, and he's cashed in on a lot of plays. And so he's somebody that we definitely got to make sure we know where he's at. But then we can't lose track of, of the other receivers that they have. You know, they have some other bigger uh, targets that are big body receivers that can run. And... So when you look at you know you look at their roster offensively, you see talent across uh, across the whole you know, between you know the offensive line, running backs, quarterback, receivers. Um, it's it's a talented bunch, and um, you know they're 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 making their way, they're making their strides, and uh, we're expecting their best. Jimmy, you, you played safety, and you know you coached defensive backs for a very long time. What makes very you long time ago? Very long. <laughs> no. <laughs> Jesse Bates different. You know, what, what have you seen yeah. so far from Jesse Bates that makes him special? Yeah. So, and I, you know, I've, I've played defensive back and I've coached, you know, defensive backs and defense for a long time. And Jesse Bates is up there. Uh, number one is in terms of one of the best safeties I've ever been around. He is extremely smart, extremely ball aware. The closest thing I can see that, that I've been around is Rondé Barber, who was a nickel in a corner. Well, that's always around the football, has the ability to take the ball out of the sky, has the ability to force fumbles, has the ability to get everybody else lined up on a play that maybe that we didn't get just get coached up correctly to make sure that everybody's in position to make the tackle or make the play. He is an extension of the coaching staff on the field uh, in terms of how smart he is. Uh, how long is this? Pro I could just keep going. I just, you just want me to just keep going? No. But no, Jesse Bates is uh, – he is an incredible player, and every every week uh, I'm watching film, and I have to go, wow, I haven't seen that. This is this is incredible stuff that he's putting together and he's putting on tape. Is there something you know, like uh, in particular that you saw, like uh, like a play or just something in practice that made you say, like, okay, this guy is different? Yeah, I mean, at first I would go back to even when I first took this job, and I was just all film from last year, uh, just watching some some plays where I'm like, how did he? How did he find the angle to go get that ball? How did he do that? And then to now get into the workings of what they were calling last year and how he went about it, I was like, okay, that's that's above the next stuff that only he could do and maybe a rare few uh, people. And so, yeah, it's really endless, uh, the traits that he possesses and then the work ethic that, that he has. Uh, he's constantly asking great questions. You see him uh, in the in the film room always watching tape. He's always on his iPad. He's got two iPads. One he's taking notes on. One he's watching film while the film, and then the other film is going up here. So he prepares like a professional, but even a, a even more than a professional. Um, he is top notch in his preparation and his talent. It seems like safety has kind of been undervalued a little bit over the last few years. Like you know, see top players on the free agent wire for a long time, you know, and they're not getting paid maybe as much as some other guys might be getting on the defense. Why is that? You think and and. When you have a guy like Jesse Bates and even Justin Simmons, like how how great is that for for a defense? And how important is that for a defense? Yeah, so so I uh, 
I highly coveted uh, <laughs> big-time safeties um, that can make plays and that can tackle um, and that can really run the show back there and get everybody lined up. Um, I, I, I guess my, my two cents on it would be, you know, the corners are such in a spotlight position where they have to make plays on these great receivers and man coverage. And so I'm guessing, you know, every NFL building around the league is going to put more uh, – you know, more more money and more draft capital into making sure they have that position right. Uh, but I do think across the league, everybody wants to have eleven players on defense and eleven players on on offense that are that are that are talented. But I just think corners outweigh the safeties just because it's such a spotlight position. That's that'd be my two cents. But is it safety is in a very important position, obviously, in this game. How much has the pass rush uh, been an emphasis for you this week? It seems like we've talked to a lot of guys, and they all are kind of talking about how that's like an area where they really want to want to improve this week. Yeah, yeah, I think uh, you know every week it's been an emphasis, but um, you know what we talk about is we have to earn the right to rush the passer first, and so. You know, if if we allow an offense just to turn around and hand the football off and run the ball for seven, eight yards, uh, we we are not going to be able to earn the right to rush the passer. And so, really, it starts there first. We got to be better on first, second down, uh, get uh, an offense behind the chains. So now we can pin our pin our ears back and, and and get that pass rush. But it's been an emphasis all off season uh, into training camp and and as we're going through here to to week six. Yes, on that note, uh, what do you make of Brooks debut? Yes. Well. Yeah, I was I was really pleased with both rookies. You know, the first the two rookies that played on defense with JD Bertrand and and, and Rook. But you asked about Rook. I was uh, he I, he made some splash plays, some tackles. It was very physical. You saw a lot of growth. You know, he made some uh, you know rookie mistakes in, in the preseason games in terms of his technique and his fundamentals. Uh, and you know, Jay Rogers and John Timu, his, his position coaches, have done an excellent job of just putting him in that constant state of growth and development, constant state of growth and development. And where he is now compared to where he was when he first arrived here is light years ahead. And we, and we can, and we're con, uh, going to expect him to continue to get better. This kind of goes off of Joe's first question of five sacks through five games. Where would you like to see that number and how do you improve it? Yeah. So again, it goes back to, it goes back to being better on first, second down. And so, you know, I know that's like the stat that everybody wants to stare at, but you know, when we're better against the run, that's what we got to do first. When once we're, we start getting better on that first, second down, and we can get you know offenses in more of a pass situation, um, then you'll see those numbers go up. You'll you'll definitely see those numbers up. And you know, the other part of it is, uh, you know, we've been playing extremely close games. We're got every, both both sides have kind of played, uh, you know, very very close to the vest for for all four quarters, and. Um, you know that that'll that'll also change the numbers as we progress through the season. When you're talking about the the run defense, when you're looking to improve that, is that just a, a matter of like sharpening up technique? Is that a matter of like you know looking deeper at tape? What how do you fix that? Yeah, you know, in, in first you got to give our opponents a lot of credit. Uh, we've played some really good teams that done a you know really good job, especially the first couple. Uh, where the running back could obviously be a part of the run game, but also the quarterback is a part of the run game, and so that's been a that's been a that's been a big uh, part of what we've what we've had to deal with the first uh, five weeks of the season. And so, um, and then and then to your point, yes, it's all about hey, making sure it starts with me first, making sure we have the right calls to get our guys in position to go suffocate the run, and then uh, and then also hey, we got we got to tackle better, you know, we got to have better fundamentals and and all those things. And um, we're not where we need to be, but we're progressing in the right direction. You kind of briefly mentioned him, and I passed over him. But the other rookie, JD. Yep. What, what do you think about his 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 you know, not his debut, but uh, his first kind of significant? Yeah. Snap. No, that that was like one of the first uh, you know the the positive things after watching uh, that 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 last game on Thursday night was how well our two rookies played for really their first extended period of time, and um, you know you just asked about JD. I thought he read it really well. He fit the run really really well. That's what we saw at Notre Dame. Uh, very instinctive, uh, you know, can, can see the, the guard pulls and can see the run schemes in front of them and be able to hit and react right now. Played with his hands, tackled well. And again, he's not where uh, we want him to be, and, and he would say the same thing, but he's definitely on the right track. And uh, we were extremely happy with those, with those two rookies' performance on Thursday night. With how kickoff has changed, how willing are you to let, like, defensive starters – go out there in coverage because it is a shorter running distance whereas before they had to go so much further that they'd be out of breath come to defensive stand yeah no we're uh 
you know, Marquise does a, you know, uh, an awesome job. And if he ever needs any of our guys, which he uses a lot of our guys already, um, you know, and, and offensive guys, I think they're, whoever wants to go out there, uh, we're, we're willing to have everybody go out there and go cover the kick. Uh, it, there's still high collisions. It's still a physical play. But to your point, you know, they're not, long, they're not running as far. Uh, so they're not as gassed or winded for the next play, especially if they're a starter. Um, but, yeah, no, we're willing to put, uh, you know, any, any guys out there, offense and defense, to go cover kicks. Anything else? Uh, yeah, Coach, um, uh, when and where is he, you know, how's he doing as he's return to play window has been opened by Coach Morris? Yeah, he's, uh, it's nice to see him out there running around a little bit. And, uh, of course, you know, our, our staff is, uh, you know, making sure we're taking it easy with him um, as he goes. And our performance, dance, uh, performance staff has done an excellent job of getting him back up to speed. And so, you know, we'll go back in and watch the tape and, and then hear from our performance staff, um, you know, how he, how he did these last couple of days, and, and then we'll make a decision on that. Uh, Jesse Bates just seems to keep on knocking these footballs out again. <laughs> do, you, do you work with him on that, or like, is that something he works with on his own? I'm, I mean, I'm sure it's getting taught to some respect. Like, he yeah. was, like talking about his. Yeah, we, we we kind of have a you know takeaway circuit stuff like that, but it's it, it's like ingrained in him. He knows I want to go get the football, and he if he finds a guy that's loose with the ball, he's gonna try to get it out every time. Not just most guys are satisfied with making tackles. He wants to make the big play, and he's not afraid to go do that. So I mean, it's a plus for us because he keeps making the play that we need him to make at the proper time. How satisfied have you been with the defense's ability to shut down explosive plays? Well, you know, I think one of the biggest things that you, you talk about in this league is that if you look at explosive plays, them the ones that lead to touchdowns. You know, because now if you give up a 30-yard play, give up a 20-yard play, now all of a sudden they're close to a field goal. And then if you give up too many of those, then that's a touchdown. So we always talk about eliminating explosive plays, make them drive the field, see how many teams can actually do that. And I was kind of like brought up on that even when I was a player. Don't give up explosive plays and see how many games you can win because a lot of offense is not patient enough to take the short game. So that gives us opportunities to go make that. And, and you, you're really proud of because the guys are not giving up explosive plays. And we got to keep doing that. You know, there's a lot of good teams out there, that we, especially the athletic uh, receivers we're about to play this week. Those guys can get explosive plays. If you don't let the ball go over your head, you got a chance to win the game. Seems like Mike Hughes has kind of had an, an underrated near, year. Um, just what have you seen from him, especially like st stepping up into this position? Well, uh, again, one of the things that when I talked to Mike, like I said, um, one of the conferences I used about a um, couple of, maybe about a month ago, is they asked me about Mike Hughes. And it's like, I knew Mike in Minnesota. So I only knew the first round draft pick Mike. I didn't know anything after that. So I challenged him to be that guy that I knew in Minnesota. And a really good football player, good cover guy, understand what you're supposed to do. And then when they run the ball your way, do what you did in Minnesota. So that's the only guy I know. You know, I, I don't know the other places that he's been. So my, my anticipation of him has been the guy that I knew in Minnesota. And that was a really good football player. You were one of three or four of the corners that was in that room, and we expected everybody to play well. And I think he's just doing that. Um, at, at the nickel position, how, do you, how are you kind of working that out in terms of personnel that you want to select for certain situations? Obviously, uh, I think Antonio Hamilton got some more reps coming off the injury last week, but how do you kind of go about guys challenging for those, those reps? Well, you know, the biggest thing we always try to do is keep guys competing, you know, because we do have some good football players that are not actually playing. You know, knock on wood, you know, we got Kevin, we got Ham, we got D. So those guys are good players. They've been playing good for other teams. It just so happened that Ham had to get in the game last week because of D. So now, you know, we, we got that competition back. And it's like, you know what, that makes the guy in front of you play better. And the same thing we do with Mike, and we got Clark, and we got AJ. So those guys are actually going out there. They know what their roles are. And it's like, I got to keep competing at a high level if I want to keep standing in this rotation. So that's you know the kind of thing that we're trying to make sure the guys understand. You guys, like a young player, for example, a guy like Clark, who hasn't had a ton of reps at the NFL level after being drafted last year. How do you kind of keep him uh, engaged and motivated? I'm sure there's a lot of just natural instinct in him as the competitor. but. Um, yeah, yeah. Coach, how do you kind of keep him involved? 
Well, well, he, you know, when you when you look at our games, you'll see Clark. He'll go in two or three series. He'll go in in critical situations. So we understand. Like, look, we put you out here. We expect for you to not have any drop offs. We expect for you to do the same thing you were if you were a starter. So the more he keeps getting that, the more situations he's in. You know, just like uh, last week when the running back came all the way through the line of scrimmage and he made a great play on that play. Well, that's a play that we expect for starters to make. Well, guess what? You're a starter. So so don't think of yourself as a backup. If when you go in, anything can happen on one play, and now you're started for the rest of the year. And if you're not waiting, if you're not ready for that, then there's going to be a drop off. Like, hey, let, let me get ready to go. No, you have to be ready to go on a team like this because there's other guys wanting to play also. Is it easier perhaps to game plan for someone like Andy Dolan who has such a vast resume? Uh, I mean, you, when you look at him, when I got a chance to see Andy, we looked at the third game of the season when he got a chance to start, the fourth game of the season, and he was he was dealing. You know, he looked like the old Andy Dalton throwing that ball out there, high numbers. You know, they got. A, I watched him against the Raiders. You know, even in Oakland, and they. I mean, you know, I mean in Las Vegas, and they won that game there. So he did a really good job of of managing their team, getting them back where they want to go, throwing the deep ball when he needed to, and you don't see a lot of you don't see a lot of interceptions. You know, I know. Last week, they got a chance that they played against Chicago, a really good football team on defense. But, you know, there are some things that I think he does very, very well. He managed the game. He understands where to throw the football. He, you don't have a lot of interceptions. There's a batted ball, ball up or something like that. But it's not just interceptions per se. He's throwing the ball where he don't was supposed to throw it. What makes Chubba – I'm saying his name totally wrong. Um, Hubbard, what makes him so hard to tackle? Well, you know, when you look at him, you look like, you know, he is not nothing flashy, but he's a really, really good football player. You know, and I think that's what I, I when we get win against him last year, I think it's sheer determination. He knows where to cut. He knows how to how to, you know, when you see Bijan, you're like, oh, there's flash. There's this. But he reminds me of a football player back in the old days. where I'm going to grind you out, grind you out. And if you're not in the gap you're supposed to be in, I'll beat you to the end zone. And, and you would not say, oh, is he a great elite running back? Well, you look at his numbers. He got elite numbers. So that's the thing that you got to put yourself in the mindset of when you plan him. You thinking you better be playing the elite running back. You know, it don't look like flashy on film, but he's always 95, 100, 150 yards. So he has elite numbers. So your mindset better be you're going against the elite running back. For you at this point in your second season, just how, how does it feel different from last year? Yeah, I mean, obviously, you know, we're we have a lot of different new new pieces in this year. Um, and especially like for me, like just, you know, confidence levels, you know, have been high and, you know, it's just been really fun to go out there and, and you know, see all the new different pieces and players and, you know, schemes that we're running. And, um, you know, there's been adversity already. There's been, you know, great moments, um, but it's just all just been going super fast. And obviously, like for us, like we're trying to sustain the best, you know, performance that we can. And, you know, we've been trying to find ourselves on on offense, um, but I think it's slowly starting to come, you know, to, to see what we can do. And, you know, we've been doing great things. We, we still got things that we got to work on, but I think that's the, that's the difference between this year and last year. And, you know, me having the game going so fast and, you know, from this year, you know, just slowing down and me understanding, you know, different different schemes and different pieces for, for myself and for the team. Is there something you can point to where it's like, okay, yeah, this is definitely slowed down for me compared to? Uh, pass protection. Mm -hmm. yeah. yeah, pass protection's been uh, been a lot lot slower for me. Um, I'm starting to understand it, you know, a lot better. And like last year, you know, I had teams, you know, sometimes teams would bring a lot of different um, just blitzes and and try to get me to stay in and not let me go out. But then, you know, this year I just like already can kind of anticipate it before it even comes, and I can just like read and see. Uh, who, who's coming before you know they even come just off of like signals and clues but that's been the biggest thing for me that that slowed down um, for this year. Speaking of pass protection um, obviously making a <clears throat> making a huge jump from last season to this season as you just yeah um, talked about you know it's it's being noticed and it's being talked about and you even said yourself um, earlier this season um, how much you pride yourself yep. in you know, in, in pass protection and in being a great blocker. Yeah. And, um, you've had some, you've had some monster blocks <laughs> and chips. Thank you. Know, yeah, thank you. Uh, this year, man. You know, so what, what, what kind of things did you, did you? Is it just about the game slowing down, or was there anything else that kind of facilitated that transition, that huge jump from last season to where you are now? 
Yeah, I mean, obviously, like with, with Coach Petrie, like, you know, I, I told him uh, that was one of the, the areas I wanted to work on a lot. And, you know, he was just saying, like, you know, we're going we're gonna to work on it. We're going to get it. And we're going to see, like, what, you know, what can come with new drills and with – but I think I think really it's the mentality. Um, you know, I have to go in there and, and bang my head in there and, and make sure that I am – you know, 100% confident in myself versus another linebacker or safety or, I mean, D lineman if, if I have to. Um, but for me, it's more so the confidence and, you know, making sure that I'm not afraid to go up in there and, you know, stick my head in there. Um, and then another another part about it is like, when you know who you got to go to and when you know exactly, you know, the guys who, who are coming in your assignments, then it makes everything a lot easier. And then now all you got to do is just use your great technique and fit. Oh, excuse me, I'm sorry. Um, and fit uh, the right the right fits, and, and you'll be you'll be good. That momentum is real, man. And, yeah. You, know, you guys are coming off two big wins uh, between the Saints and the Bucks, and you know it's awesome that they're also divisional wins. Um, you know how is that how is that momentum carrying you guys into yet another you know uh, important divisional game this week against Carolina? Yeah, I mean it's it's great. Uh, obviously, like having those, those two wins are huge for for us for the division. But then you know we got Carolina coming, and we we gotta we gotta go to Carolina and play our best game um, because they just how just how how we know that this is a division game they they know the exact same thing so they're gonna bring their everything and they're gonna bring their all um, and we we need to match that energy and we need to come in there and be the aggressors uh, start it off early and you know maintain it throughout the whole game because you know we. We we want to get that last that that last division win for for this stretch, and but we but we know that it's not going to be an easy challenge going up in there. So we need to go in there with the right mindset and just bring dominance um, throughout the whole game. It seems like the sentiment this season is kind of like y'all bend but you don't break. You don't blink in these like moments of like all your wins are you know within coming in the last minute and things of that sort. Yeah. Um, do you feel like that's kind of forming the identity of the team a little bit? Yeah, I mean, we're definitely learning a lot about each other. And, you know, I think, you know, teams that can win these kind of games are, you know, are destined to, well, I, I think, turn out to be really good teams just because they got to find those, themselves in those moments. And, you know, they got to just buckle down and, and learn and, you know, do whatever it takes to win. Um, obviously, as a team, you don't want to be in those moments uh, a lot. Like, obviously, if you have to, then you, you, you want to pull it out. But, you know, we want to, you know, be good with like you know having a comfortable lead and you know helping the helping the defense out and letting them you know get their calls and just do what they do um, easier. But you know for us as an offense as we're as we're you know transitioning into you know this other part this other quarter of the season like we want to you know come in here and um, you know do the right things. But then we want to you know create explosives, be explosive on the pass game, the run game, like, you know, it, we, we want defenses to be like, we, we don't know what to stop and we don't know how to stop it. And that's that's our biggest thing. In those moments, how helpful is the veteran leadership, you know, between Kirk, Chris, Jake, all those guys who have had years of experience and have been here before for you as a young player? Yeah, I mean, it, it helps a lot because, you know, they, they, they played a lot of football and, you know, they're obviously just seasoned in, in what they got to do. Um, but with those guys, like if I have a question or I have to ask them a question, like they're always, you know, there to answer. And you know, even for us, like Drake, Mooney, um, Tyler, like Ray, Ray, you know, they're always there to to help us if we don't know or if we want to understand a little bit better. Um, they always have the right answer. So, you know, just having those guys and especially the O line and me and pass protection for the O line and even with Kirk too, like you know, they're always you know so available and it just makes us you know so much better as an offense. Those vets, um, you know, again, going back to the momentum thing, um, you know, it can be huge. It can also, you know, work against you, obviously, because in the NFL, every week is a new week and it's a new team. You know, you right. guys had some great wins, but um, you're resetting to get ready to, you know, play a new a new team now. So, yeah. how's how's the overall, you know, mentality? And is it is is it something that you feel like the leaders on the team are running the point on, or is it just team wide that everyone has kind of remove that and everyone is reset getting ready you know for the next game yeah i think it's a whole team like you know we we're all on the same page and what we got to do on sunday and we're all on the same page that we need to go out here and you know be our best um because you know people keep telling us like 
you know, it's, it's the Panthers. Like, it's a, it doesn't matter. Like, it's NFL. You know, they have just as good as guys on their squad. But, you know, that's how we're coming in. Um, and we, we need to bring – we need to set the tone. Like I, like I said, we need to set the tone early. And, you know, it can't be like how we did last year. Um, it just it kind of just like feel goal feel like we, we need to go in there and, and, and bring in, you know, that dominance. Um, but everybody everybody's on the same page. Everybody's ready to go. Everybody's locked in. Nobody is worried about what happened uh, last week or um, or a couple weeks ago. Like we're all just focused on this game right here and, and what we got to do. As it relates, to, you know, practice this week and film study and you know prepping for the Panthers. You know, what are some of the keys you know that you that you guys are taking into this game offensively? You know, what are some of the things that you see that the Panthers do well? That yeah. you guys have to work on counter. Yeah, I mean they 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 run to the football really well. Um, you know, we we got to take advantage of. You know, executing plays um, on the ground game, on in the pass game, like we gotta take advantage of the spaces um, that they that they leave open, and we you know we need to you know when we get the ball in our hands, you know we gotta be special with the ball. Um, we have to make them miss, uh, break tackles, like we need to do it all uh, to to keep that momentum and keep the ball you know moving forward, and then just just score in the red zone and convert third downs when we when we have that opportunity. Um, those are the, those are the biggest things for us when we go up against their defense. Um, well, last one, last one. Mm -hmm. um, in terms of like with all the new pieces on the offense, you know, Zach, Kirk, all the like, it's taken a time, taken time to gel. In what ways do you feel like you've take, taken a step forward as an offense in the last couple weeks? Um, just just us like knowing our assignments and you know getting the play calls in the right way, and just us like going in and. Knowing exactly what we have to do, and you know, some you know, a couple times in like the beginning of the season, um, it, it kind of felt rushed, and it kind of felt like we, you know, we're all trying to like hear and see what what we got going on. But now it's like now we come in ready to go. Like we're, you know, we got point A, point B, point C. Like we're, you know, locked in on what we have to do. Um, but then now, like, with the growth from that is now just executing at every chance that we get. And obviously, like you might not get every single one, but if you can get close to every single one and and as close to as perfect as you can, like that that's that's what's gonna make us dominant. And it it doesn't matter what what play call we call, um, doing it the right way and and seeing you know an outcome out of it is is the main goal. So that's that's where we're at right now. Bijan, it's one thing to you know win a game. It's another thing to put up you know, 509 yards, 36 points. Yeah. That's, that's that's not a weekly yeah. thing. So, yeah. You know how how did you feel about that performance coming out of that game? Yeah. And do you feel like that's the identity? That's the potential. That's the full potential of the offense. Or do you feel like there's more? Oh no no no. There's there's so much more. Um, you know that that's that's a fantastic. Like you don't see those kind of passing games, but then for us like with the 509 like. You could rush for we could rush for over a hundred and some, and you could have seven hundred yards of off. And you're like, that's when you get to those kind of numbers, like it's it's just really hard to stop, you know, that team that day. Um, but I think you know we have so much more in the offense. Obviously, we put a show on last week that was, you know, absolutely incredible. Um, but I, I feel that with who we have and the threats that we have, and you know, we could we could do so much more things too uh, from that. The performance, you know, from. Week one to now, you know, it, it looks as though the team is like snowballing performance-wise. It, it's like you guys are getting better and better, and there's more and more guys that are becoming involved, and the yardage is going up. Everything's going up. Yeah, know? yeah. Well, how do you feel about that? that? That's just with time. Like, I feel because obviously everybody, a lot of people are new. Um, so I feel like with time, like, and with trust and with, you know, things that you can implement now, um, that's where we're that's where you get better at um as offense but like you just said like as long as we're continuing to improve every single week from from what we keep doing um then then that's when you that's when you see all the explosive offenses that that we attain it to do happen and i mean I, i'm excited to see like where, where we go uh because i you know god willing i just want this to be you know the the offense that everybody was waiting and love to see last question um you know in the regulation time, um, you guys win the coin toss and you elect uh, to receive first. You know, yes. Yeah. 
What's the mindset knowing that you guys are taking the ball, you know, out there on the field um, in overtime? You know, what what's your mindset? What's the overall vibe for the offense? To score, I mean, to score the ball. Um, no matter how it looks, no matter how we got to do it, like the the main goal is to score. And you know, fortunately, you know, we we did it when we did it. But we just didn't. We, our goal was not to give the the ball back to Tampa Bay. Like we we, we didn't want to give it back to them. So. You know, we had to do everything in our power to to unleash and to call the right calls and get in the end zone. But as as long as our goal was to keep it away from them and you know end it right away, that was the main goal. Yeah. Can you just talk about the experience of working with Kirk in those kinds of situations and um, having that relationship between the quarterback and the wide receiver? Yeah, I think I actually saw that clip um, of his press and sorry, and um, it's exactly what he said. You know, just getting time in the film room, time on the field, and. Um, as we begin to grow and we keep on growing and with other receivers, it's going to be like that. You know, he's a very, very smart quarterback, seen a lot of stuff out throughout his years. So for him to be more decisive and, and um, for us to make it easier on him is is the ultimate goal. So um, that's what we're working on. Is, it, is that the kind of thing that can like actually make you guys better receivers too, just in terms of having that understanding with the quarterback? Um, over over a period of time, just developing that relationship? Yeah, I mean, if you if you look around the league for um, quarterbacks who have been together with with guys like tight ends, wide receivers, they've they've been together for four plus years. You see, sometimes they don't even run routes, right. and it's just that feel that um, that the quarterback, that connection that you guys have, and um, that helps a lot in certain situations, um, in situations that we've been in. So uh, to be able to click on that is is really huge. Could you talk a little bit about um, Carolina defense and what challenges you guys are looking for this weekend? Uh, yeah, you know, they they have a great secondary. They got great corners. Um, and their front seven is, is is really good too, you know. But we can't take this game lightly or anything like that. And we got to go out there um, like it's the Super Bowl. So we're going to go out there and try to dominate. Drake, when you have somebody like Darnell on the other side, and he's kind of getting open as well, how much does that make your routes just, you know, not say double teams, but just how much does that help you? I mean, it helps me a ton, and it's not even just Mooney. It's it's Ray Ray as well. It's Red. Um, it's, it's Pitts. It's everybody who's involved in the pass game. Um, makes life easier, I think, on everybody. How about just this offense, the balance from running to passing? Sometimes in the past, you guys have just, you know, Arthur wanted to run it, but now there's a little more passing. Is this about as balanced offense as you've seen since you've been here? Um, since I've been here, yeah, you could probably say that. Um, it's very, very well balanced. And um, I mean, we have guys everywhere um, from the backfield all the way to the outside of the numbers. So um, to be able to have that arsenal is very, very powerful in this league. And uh, I think we're going to take advantage of it. What has Darnell added to that room? He, I think, I forget who it was described him. Him as the kind of the, the mental guy and you're the, the emotional leader <laughs> in, that, in that room. Uh, um, that makes sense. Um, <laughs> yeah, Mooney is a very, very sharp when it comes to football. And, and he sees a lot of stuff. And um, on top of that, he's in a, a very, very good route runner. So to, to have that and then also pair that with the mental side is, is very dangerous. And he's brought that even more to this team. So um, he keep on doing his thing. I'm going to be happy. Does he bust people's chops a little bit, though? We've gotten that impression that he's a he's a chops Oh, buster. yeah, Mooney's Mooney. He's not going to change for anybody. He don't care who you are. Um, he's going to say how it is. But that's just who he is, and, um, and we love him for that. How does it come across? I mean, is he, is he smiling or is it kind of deadpan? He's just like, no, oh, no, 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 no. Um, I guess you could say it's like a little bit of jokes, but at the same time, there's a point to everything he says. So um, it's in a playful manner, but at the same time, it's like, hey, maybe we can do this or why is this that there's certain a way? In there yeah, yeah, you know, and um, he gets it across very, very well. And nobody looks at him like, oh, you're you're a bad person or right. something like that. Yeah, yeah. Sure. I'm trying to keep my language. Yeah. <laughs> we got it. We, we hear you. Yeah, yeah. Does it feel like Kyle's kind of on the cusp of uh, breaking out a little bit, you know, the last couple of games? Oh, yeah, for sure. Um, you know, Kyle keep on doing his thing, and he's going to see the ball. So, um, you know, we keep we keep on him about that. And um, I think he's doing his thing, and I can't wait to see him just keep on progressing and show the world what he is, you know. I mean, at the end of the day, I always say, and I'll keep on saying it, like he's a unicorn of a player. So, um for, for him to go out there and have those explosive plays, we need that. And it's going to be week in and week out. We see that. You add, you know, a prime Kyle at his best of what you guys are doing right now on offense. How good does that make, you know, to this team and this offense? Lethal. Um, I, again, if Kyle keeps on doing the things that he's doing, then um, we're going to go right there with him. So yeah, he's going to do his job. How big was it for the offense to uh, break out in the passing game 
the last three games when it was clear they were ganging up on the run. Uh, it was really, really huge, and that goes back to his point of just being a balanced offense. Mm -hmm. um, to have that is huge in this league because you can't be one-dimensional as an offense. So um, uh, to have that is is big time. Do you think once y'all can pull it all together, what does that potential for that? Um, I mean, again, it's 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 a week in week out thing. Mm -hmm. If we're gonna pass a lot, or if we're mm -hmm. gonna run a lot, so I mean, there is gonna come a game where both run and pass is going to go crazy. So um, I'll be waiting for that game, and I'll be excited <laughs> when we see it for sure because it's going to be a lot of a lot of points on the board. What's the longest voice memo you've gotten from Kirk? The longest voice memo? <laughs> um, he usually keeps it short, but I would say like a minute, minute 30 or something like that. But it, it's great to hear that. And then, too, you're at home, you're watching film by yourself, and you get a text from, from Kirk, and it's literally what you're watching at that moment. So it's like it's perfect, you know, and he's always thinking about ball, and it gets you to always think about football. And um, that relationship is, is building with all of us, and it's really cool. Anybody else in your life send you voice memo texts? Um, yeah. Oh, yeah, so yeah. Yeah, yeah. So it's not rare? No, it's not rare. And I like to send voice memo texts, too, oh, if it's, if it's not. This is a whole new world for me. Yeah. I didn't realize this yeah, was no, something. Yeah, no, 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 no. Um, the reason I use voice memo is, like, if I have a point to make and you can't really hear tone of voice on text, you know. So it's a little bit more personal way to, to talk to somebody, especially if you're talking about football or anything like that, you know, to understand, like, what's going on, really. It's, it's better than a phone call and then hanging up so you could just send you a little <laughs> voice memo and, and get on with your day. Is Kirk's, are Kirk's, like, stream of consciousness and he's just watching film and kind of talking out loud or thinking out loud? Or has yeah, he got a specific I mean, point when he's like... He's got a specific point, but sometimes you'll hear him driving on the freeway or... You you hear like cars going by and he's just maybe in front of Waffle House and he's out there just talking, you know. So um, at any point, any point of the day, if he sends a voice, my mom gonna listen to it and I'm going to get right to it. So. Hey, do you yeah. remember where y'all went to lunch at? At uh, the uh, coach said the Commons of Calabasas y'all met at? Yeah, yeah, yeah. Uh, back in Cali, we had some uh, uh, Italian stuff and um, uh, that was a great meeting, and mm -hmm. um, I think that was the start of a relationship that's going to be very, very strong. And um, Coach Raw is just real for that one. Mm -hmm. He yeah. treated hopefully. Did he, huh? pay he, the bill? he treated hopefully. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I tried to put my card down, like you know, I was going to pay, but <laughs> 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 that, was a, that was a decoy. That was a bluff. Yeah. <laughs> the Panthers, uh, Andy Dahl, has seen everything that you can throw at him. Uh, mm -hmm. You know, he's a he's a good quarterback. Get the ball out fast, and uh, as far as like sack totals. He don't like to he don't like to take sacks, so he gonna he gonna you know find a way to either get out the pocket and throw the ball away or or find somebody open. Mm -hmm. uh, he's, he's processing fast, and you know this uh, offensive line, you know that's kind of going through some growing pains right now. A couple mm -hmm. guys injured right now, mm -hmm. so we got to just try to uh, kind of take advantage of their youth and their inexperience of playing with each other. Mm -hmm. uh, mm. And uh, try to you know get some sacks, uh, create pressure. The last four games, the home team won. I know you ain't been here for that, but the uh, NFC South, these two teams just seem to, you know, have a big fight no matter what the records are. Uh, and and that's what you get when you know two teams don't like each other or it's rivalry or division teams, you know. So uh, they they know the Falcons, you know, Falcons know the Panthers, you know is. It's a old rivalry, so we got to go in there knowing that, and we got to get up, and we got to, as a defense, we got to be uh, ready to go from the start. Uh, you know that Chuba, Chuba, excuse me, Chuba has been playing really well. Mm -hmm. uh, Deontay Johnson get a lot of targets. They got some youth that was, uh, receiver. Mm -hmm. We got to see what they're gonna do at tight end. Uh -huh. You know, unfortunately, what happened last week. We got to see what they're gonna do at tight end, but uh, you know. If, if we get on these guys early and try to suffocate mm -hmm. them from getting going, that'll help us. But uh, the, these guys can score from anywhere. Pass rush wise, I was just talking to Grady uh, yesterday. Uh, you know, what, where are y'all at with stuff coming together there? Y'all facing a lot of quick throw guys, though, too. We, uh, we have, and we also face a lot of mobile quarterbacks, mm -hmm. which uh, you, you, can't, you can't say. You can't make excuses, man. Mm -hmm. We got to get. We got to get after it. Mm -hmm. We got to get after it. We got to. Uh, we got to get on the board and uh, as the up front, you know, especially uh, D line and outside linebackers. Mm -hmm. We got to get some pressure and we got to get some QB hits. We got to get some QB hurries. Get them off the mark because when you see what we do, when we do, mm -hmm. uh, good stuff happen from that stuff. And mm -hmm. so uh, 
as uh, you know, as as you know, the rush. We got to get there. I mean, Grady, I know he ain't in y'all's group, but Grady said the rookie did pretty good. Uh, his first twelve snaps there. Uh, for sure, group. for yeah. sure, group, uh, with the first twelve snaps, uh, snaps of being in the NFL. This uh, this a hard game, uh, you know. Uh, he made an impact when he was in, mm -hmm. and uh, you you can watch it, you can see it, and watch it. Mm -hmm. And so, uh, with you know him being that young uh, and not having experience, uh, making an impact the mm -hmm. first time he come out there, and kind of not really looking like a rookie, kind of not mm -hmm. like you know head on the swivel. So, mm -hmm. uh, you know, good for him, and we glad that you know he got he got some reps. Uh, we were talking to um, uh, Drake about the passing game being balanced. How much does the passing game help the running game and, and vice versa? Oh yeah, no, it just comes. Uh, everything comes in balance in the end. I think. I think uh, like they wanted to stop. Like if you want to stop the run, we're gonna aerate it, and then having the options to do that is always uh, great. So that makes the defense uh, just treat everything balance, like you said. Talk about the like, Talk about the Carolina defense and just the challenges they can bring to you guys. Yeah, no, they're a really good defense. You know, have some injuries, but we. And like every every player that they have is uh, really good, so it should be uh, as long as we handle our business and um, just take it one play at a time, it should be a good outcome for us. How do you approach a game? You know, is it the same when you approach a team that's three and two as compared to one and four, for example? Oh yeah, of course. I think um, shoot, look at the past two times we played over there, we end up. Uh, I think they had a negative record as well, and then they end up beating us. So you you can't really. Uh, can't really look at records because it's, uh, every team's great in the NFL. It's a matter of execution between whoever, whoever plays. Talk about the running game just in general. It seems like Bijan, they were trying to get screen passes kind of to both of you and out. Is that kind of something to get you guys going a little more maybe? Wait, say that again? Kind of, you kind of little dump screens kind of so much as some handoffs. It's kind of like you guys aren't just directly taking a handoff, maybe taking just a short screen to get going. Um, yeah, maybe you can talk to Coach about that, I'll say. <laughs> Yeah, it's just play wise and stuff. It's just a flow of the game, I guess. Okay. What would it mean for this team to be three and zero just to start off the season in the division? So it would be it would be awesome. You know, I think uh, what Coach Raw and all, everyone says uh, outrun the South. That's our goal, and that's uh, really just being one and zero this week. Obviously, the outcome is to be three and zero, but be really being a uh, one and zero this week to put us in the right position. How much did that little buy give you guys a little break and just kind of get your bodies rested and get kind of get back refocused? Oh no, it was good. It was good. I think uh, a lot of people. Some people got out of time, some people stayed just getting their body rights and stuff, so it should be, it was good.